Have you ever taken a survey and wondered what they do with the different data in a survey? Have you ever wondered about the difference between analyzing quantitative and qualitative data or what that even means? Have you ever wondered how you could use MATLAB to help you with data analysis? Well, that's some of the things we're going to go over in this video. In this video, I'm going to go over a survey with you that we used in a research project, how we collected the data, analyzed the data, and how we use MATLAB to help us do all this. So I imagine you filled out at least one survey somewhere in your life probably a lot more. And on it, you probably answered questions of how likely you were to return, how happy you were, how satisfied you were, and you had maybe a Likert scale of one to six, one to 10, something like that, and you had to say how much you agreed. So this first part, that's quantitative data. So then you're working with numbers. So we have a bunch of numeric data to analyze. MATLAB is a very powerful tool that you can use to analyze all that quantitative data. I'm not gonna go into quantitative data analysis in this video, but that is something you can do in MATLAB. And I'm happy to go through that more in the future. If you're interested, just let me know. In this video, we're gonna talk about analyzing qualitative data. So qualitative parts of the data are open into questions when you have to type in a response. This is an example of some qualitative data in a survey. In this particular study, we were looking at engineering students understanding of models. So we had a bunch of different questions related to models in STEM and just asking general questions of what are they? We had some multiple choice questions, but in this particular video, I'm going to dive into a few of the open-ended responses at the very beginning of the survey, asking a student, what is a model in STEM? Give some examples and explain them. So in those responses, there's a ton of text. There's a lot of different ways to go about analyzing this data. So in this particular study, we ended up with over 4,000 responses to the survey by the end of the study. If you want details about these studies, then you can go ahead and check out some of the papers that we've published related to this. Here, let's just talk about the actual data and how to analyze that data. Again, there are a ton of approaches and different methods to analyze qualitative data. Diving into those details is outside the scope of this video. It's common practice to analyze qualitative data with researchers. So having a bunch of people on the team, it could be undergraduate researchers or graduate student researchers or sometimes faculty researchers, but most of the times it's undergraduate or graduate students. So having these students go through and analyze all the data line by line, word by word, and decipher which types of categories are relevant for that framework, or how they fit the framework that's deciphered. So this is very time consuming. And the other problem is when a person is reading some type of data, they're gonna bring in their own subjective opinion. So for instance, if I say the model of a cell, what do you picture in your head? So most of you are probably thinking of like a cell in the human body, so small cell. Some of you might actually be thinking like a jail cell and so like a physical structure. But then if I'm saying a model of one, are you picturing something that is physical or something that's drawn in a computer or something that's more of a simulation? These are all different types of models. So every individual probably will see something different. Now, there might be a common answer of like, okay, most commonly I will see a cell in a science class in a physical model where you take apart different parts of the cell to understand the structure of a cell. Maybe that's the most common. But again, there's some human subjectivity to deciding what that is. And now on top of that, imagine sitting down and reading 4,000 people's different responses to what are types of models and different examples and what do those examples mean. That would take a lot of time and be pretty overwhelming. So I imagine there'd be a lot of burnout happening and you probably couldn't even do that in one sitting. So imagine you analyze some data and then you go back two days later, a week later, a month later and reanalyze different data. You're gonna have different opinions at the times of analyzing those different data sets. And again, if you're doing it in one sitting, there's no way you're not gonna have burnout and just start analyzing data differently. So having humans analyze data like that presents a lot of potential problems. So nowadays they're starting to implement more machine learning into analyzing qualitative data. There are some machine learning features in MATLAB that you can get into and maybe I'll do future video related to that. But for now, let's talk about like an in-between path. So what are my options? If I don't want humans to analyze my data because that's time consuming, complex, a lot of implications related to it, and I don't want to go full-blown machine learning, nor do I even really trust what machine learning will do when analyzing data when there's no system in place, what can I do? Well, that's what this program that we developed here gets into. So in this program here, we used all these keywords and these different ideas that humans generated. And the research team went through and put together these words based on students' responses. And then we use these keywords to develop a MATLAB program that can go through and analyze all this data. So this is a good option of something you can do, and it ensures an objective point of view. So keep in mind, it is obviously going to miss some things. So when a human is helpful, might be something like, if 
if I say a computer model, I don't know if you're talking about a computational model, like a simulation, or if you're talking about a CAD model where it's some type of 3D drawings. I don't know unless I have more context. And as a person, I can read into what somebody says, what somebody wrote, and get more context to decipher those two different options. As a computer, it can't really do that. Now, there is a system in place that helps look for if something is already considered a graphical model or some type of 3D CAD or engineering drawing, then it will not read computer model as a computational model. And if they say computer program and they don't already say that, then we assume computational model. Again, this is just one example within this code where we went through and tried to put together a code that can really catch and decipher the different types of models. And it's good for a large data set. So if I have a large amount of qualitative data, this is a good approach where I can, again, analyze the data super quick, something that might take people months to do, this computer program can do in seconds. So it's a great tool and a great resource. If you wanna dive further into the code, here's a little bit of it here, but you can actually download the code on your own and it has some sample data and a sample output. And then there's more about the research papers behind this. And I recommend going to check it out and try it out on your own. So the research team went in and analyzed a bunch of student survey responses and identified the types of models in their responses. So these analyzed survey responses were used as a comparison to determine the reliability of the MATLAB program. To develop this program, we went through a long process of slowly adding keywords, removing keywords, and checking the reliability of the actual program. So how capable was it to identify the correct models that us researchers saw for these different types of models. So when reliability increased, then we kept changes. If it decreased, we removed changes and we continued to make minor changes. Once we were satisfied with this whole process of the analysis, then we added in some plots at the end to just quickly display the data and what we were seeing, comparing in this case, the pre and post, which was surveys given at the beginning of the semester and the end of the semester. So we could look at engineering students' changes and their ability to identify different types of models. And again, this isn't the only way to analyze qualitative data. It's super important to take your study and your research questions and everything into context. So if I'm doing some type of qualitative data where I just really want to understand one person's perspective, one person's story, obviously that's something that I'm going to dive into as a researcher, as a person, and really just understand everything of their experience. But if I want a general picture of what's going on and I want more than just the numeric data I'm collecting, I want to analyze qualitative data, this is one way of going about and analyzing a bunch of qualitative data. Or again, machine learning is another option that can be considered and there's studies that do that as well. And so it's just good to know what kind of tools are out there. And again, MATLAB is just one of the tools you could use to do this same type of data analysis. You could do this in Java, Python, anything else. I personally like MATLAB for analyzing data like this because it interacts with Excel so well. It's nice to just easily read in Excel file data and have everything in cell arrays and be able to analyze the data that way. So I think it's a great option. And if you have questions about developing a similar tool, please comment. And I'd love to hear any questions you have, and I'd love to help you through it. If you have specific questions about built-in functions in MATLAB or programming logic, check out my MATLAB tutorial.